G'day, Daniel here from Living Entertainment North Coast and as you can see in front of me, I once again have the A11 Tribute from Rotel. Why am I back here talking about this again? Well, you had some questions about speaker pairings and I've got some answers. So since initially releasing that video, we've had a lot of questions in the comments section about other speaker pairings with this particular amplifier. And at the time, there were questions we couldn't answer because we didn't have the speakers in, or they just weren't speakers we actually thought of pairing with this particular amplifier. But now that people have asked us, well, I've taken the time to sit down and have a listen. And well, I'm here to tell you about my thoughts. So where better to start than the Bowers and Wilkins 606 bookshelf speakers? These were the most requested pairing combination. And to be fair, when we produced that video, the Bowers and Wilkins weren't actually a speaker that we had access to, but obviously now that has changed. And I can say you'll be seeing a lot more of these speakers as well as other speakers in the Bowers and Wilkins range in the future. But that's neither here nor there. The question was, how does the Bowles and Wilkins 606 sound when paired up with the Rotel A11 Tribute? And I gotta tell you, I was damn impressed. Having heard them now myself, I can easily see why so many people were requesting that we try this combination. First and foremost, I'd describe these speakers in this particular situation as detailed. It really does feel like every single little piece of information that this amplifier is putting out, the Bowles and Wilkins are giving you back in spades. And nowhere is that more apparent than with the dynamic range of this particular pairing. I can tell you up front now that none of the other speakers that I tried for this video had the dynamic range that these did in this particular pairing. Regardless of whatever track that I chose, there was always that sense of the, the quieter parts of the mix being still been very, very audible, but the, the, they were clearly toned down volume wise. And likewise, the parts of the mix that are supposed to be in the front and more obvious, that gives the sound a sense of depth. Some other speakers, which we'll get to, there's kind of like a unanimous sort of volume. Everything's there and presented in a similar sort of way, but the Bowers really did play with that sense of hey, dynamic energy, I suppose. And on top of that, the bass that was coming out of this particular combination was incredibly punchy and snappy. And anyone who's seen these videos before with me knows that's how I like my bass. I like it to be really punchy. And these absolutely delivered in that regard. And it wasn't just punchy, it was big. But it came in and went. It didn't linger. It wasn't lumpy or anything like that. Now, if there was anything about this combination that I wish was a little bit different, it was the sound stage. Now that's not to say that the imaging was bad, because it wasn't, the imaging was absolutely fantastic. And uh, like I said, with that dynamic range, you get that sense of depth that was greatly appreciated. But the soundstage itself was perhaps a little more narrow than I was hoping for or expecting based on the speakers I tried before this one. And it didn't quite have the height that I was hoping for, but don't let that put you off. These are actually one of my favorite pairings with the A11 Tribute now, and I would be more than happy to have this combination at home. If I was to describe it, I would say that this is the most energetic of the testings that I did today. And if you're looking for a very lively, very rich sound, an exciting sound, an engaging sound, the Bowles and Wilkins 607 Signature Series with the A11 Tribute, they've got you covered. So if you watched our previous video, you would know that the Bronze 100 from Monitor Audio was our speaker of choice in our initial pairing tests. And uh, that begs the question, what happens if you step up to the next model, the Silver 100s? And well, something pretty magical happens. Now there are some pretty big differences in the way that the Silver 100s from Monitor Audio pair up with the A11 Tribute when compared to the Bowers and Wilkins. First of all, the bass with the Bowers, which was quite snappy and punchy. With these, it is larger than life and it is lush. It is big and it makes these sound a lot larger than they actually are, which was pretty cool. And likewise, that mid range is equally lush and rich and feels incredibly wide. Now the treble, interestingly enough, with this particular pairing, 
was pushed right to the front of the mix. So if you can imagine your cymbals and your hi-hats are sitting up here with your vocals back here, which I kind of wasn't expecting. Now, that isn't to say that I think these particular speakers sound bright with this amplifier, because that's completely incorrect. I don't think they sound bright at all. It was more just the way the mixing sat in regards to the sound stage, and it kind of caught me off guard, actually, how separated the, those treble, those instruments were from the rest of the mix. Now the soundstage itself, with that little extra depth, also has a lot of extra width. And uh, I definitely appreciated that, especially given how, as I said, lush the actual speaker amplifier combination sounded. If there was one thing I noticed more than anything else with the Silver 100s when compared to the Bowers and Wilkins with this amp, it was the dynamic range was a little bit weaker with the Silver 100s and that led to a slightly less exciting and engaging sound, for me personally at least, than the Bowers. And perhaps that's why the Silver 100s sound more lush and rich to me than the Bowers and Wilkins, because that dynamic range is a little bit more uniform. I'm hearing more of everything as opposed to having to really listen for everything. And uh, to some people that might be fantastic and to others that might make music a little less exciting. That said, I also don't think you can particularly go wrong with this particular pairing. It's uh, still a fantastic sound and it's a larger than life sound. And next we had the Wharfdale Dentons, the vintage bookshelves that uh, I'm quite fond of and love the look of. So how did they pair up in this particular combination? Well, first of all, the soundstage, again, much like the Silver 100s, was pretty damn wide. It didn't have a lot of height, much like the Bowers and Wilkins, but uh, it definitely had a lot of width and there was certainly a decent amount of depth there to the actual sound mix. In terms of imaging, these are incredibly strong. And I would say they're on parity with the Bowers and Wilkins 607 signatures and actually ahead of the Monitor Audio Silver 100s. So if you're an imaging focused person, that's something to consider. Now the bass coming from this particular combination wasn't quite as large as I was hoping and it definitely didn't have the punch or the slam that I was hoping for. It still sounded good, especially with a handful of very bass heavy tracks. Uh, I'm particularly fond of using Bob Dylan's Man in the Long Black Coat as a uh, test for bass and they really held up uh, really well in that regard. And likewise, that's a great song for testing imaging. But where things got a little bit interesting for me and kind of caught me off guard was the amount of treble detail. Now treble and wharfdale aren't two words I think I've ever used in the same sentence. I would never consider any of their speakers based on my previous listening experience to be a particularly trebly or treble detail orientated speaker. Dwarfdale is well renowned for its mid-range. But in this particular combination, the much like the Silver 100s, the treble popped right out into the front of the mix, which caught me off guard. And to be honest, that's kind of not what I come to these speakers for when it comes to sound signatures. For some other people out there, that might be great. But for me, the qualities that I look for in the Wharfdale Dentons aren't necessarily what were coming through when paired up with the A11 Tribute. That's not to say that it sounded bad or anything remotely like that. They still sounded quite good together, but it just wasn't the laid back listen that I was hoping for or expecting based on my previous experience pairing these speakers up with different amplifiers. So while I can say that I wasn't disappointed with the actual quality of the sound, I was disappointed with the qualities that they came about by combining these two things together. I listened to Wharfdale's to relax, and these didn't give me that relaxing sound that I was hoping for. But it's not all doom and gloom. I still had one more Wharfdale speaker to test the wild card. And uh, well, <laughs> it uh, definitely um, turned things around. Lastly, I tried the Wharfdale Linton, which I was really nervous about going into for a number of reasons. First of all, the Dentons didn't give me that laid back, relaxed sound that I go to Wharfdale to get. So that had me a little bit nervous. Second of all, this is a pretty entry level amplifier. These speakers cost more, more than double on the way to triple what this amplifier does. So that made me a little bit nervous. And lastly, there's the power. Now, the Wharfdale Lintons are rated from 25 watts to 200, but 
you still kind of get nervous with something this size running off a little amp like this. And I was a bit like, uh, I don't know how this is gonna turn out. And it sounded awesome. So let me tell you a little bit about my Linton experience. First of all, the sound stage, as you would expect, this is a much bigger speaker and unlike the other speakers we tested, this is a three-way design, not a two-way. This sound stage was huge. Not only did I get that width that I was looking for, but I got the height. And that's something that I've always loved about the Lintons, no matter what we've put them on, that height that isn't necessarily always there with other bookshelves or stand mount speakers is absolutely there. This combination, no exception. So not only was the soundstage wide, but it was deep. And the instruments were clearly separated, not just in a horizontal fashion, but also in a deep fashion. And unlike the Bowers and Wilkins and the Silvers, where the treble was kind of very up front and forward, with the Lintons, the vocals were always what was in the very front and the hi-hats and the cymbals and all your other treble related instruments were pulled back. They were still clearly there and they were bold, but they weren't in your face, which is exactly what I personally look for when I'm doing speaker pairings. Um, I've always got to have those vocals in the front. I'm not a big fan of having other instruments popping up in the front of the mix. The bass was big, it wasn't boomy, it wasn't necessarily punchy like the Bowers and Wilkins, but it definitely had a little bit more of that slam than you got from the other combinations, which obviously was greatly appreciated. And of course they did what I always go to the Lintons to do. They smoothed over some raw recordings. Now I didn't bring this up with the other speakers, but there was one song I tested that I didn't like basically on any of them. Uh, that was Toxicity by System of a Down. And I picked that song specifically because there is a section with some horribly compressed sounding cymbals. They, they sound dreadful. I don't know the story behind it, but you know, not a fan. And regardless of if I was using the Bowles and Wilkins, all the monitor audio silvers, all the Dentons, that kind of harshness was still there. But the Lintons not just pulled that back, but they smoothed that over, which is a quality they bring to pretty much everything they're plugged into. And I'm glad to see that even running on something like the Rotel A11 Tribute, they still did that, no issues at all. So the thing about the Lintons is, I don't know how much of this positivity is due to the A11 Tribute and how much is due to the Lintons. Obviously, they're both bringing qualities together that have given me this experience, but I don't know if this means that the Lintons will just run and sound good on anything, or if the A11 Tribute is just punching well above its weight and in not only price point, but also power and capability. So, interesting mix, an exciting mix. Well, technically, I guess it's a laid back mix. <laughs> but either way, I uh, thoroughly enjoyed my time with this combination, which, as I said, was the one I was most nervous about going into, and that's why I considered it the wild card. I honestly didn't expect these two to sound as good paired together as they did. And so that really begs the question, after trying these four speakers, which ones are my favorites and what do I recommend based on this experience? I've had a great time listening to all of these speakers, and yeah, I don't think it's a question of which one of these speakers pairs best with this particular amplifier. I think it comes down to what sort of music do you listen to and how do you like to listen to it? So for me personally, I have two favorite combinations uh, with this particular amplifier and I like them both for very, very different reasons. First of all is the Bowles and Wilkins. I just love the energy and excitement that those speakers bring to this amplifier. They really do make me want to get up and move. You know, they, they pull me into the music and make me want to become an active participant. It's a fun and engaging listening experience. And if that's what you're looking for, the Bowles and Wilkins are a fantastic choice. The Wolfdale Lintons, on the other hand, it's just a lush, rich, relaxing sound, which is honestly what the Lintons bring to almost everything they're plugged into. If you're not looking to get up and boogie, but you'd rather sit back on the couch, close your eyes and let the music wash over you, um, the Lintons do a fantastic job of that, especially given their massive soundstage, uh, the height of the soundstage again, and 
you know, you can just let the music wash over you. It's, a, like I said, a very different experience to the Bowers and Wilkins. And it's not a matter of which one is better or worse. It's just which one is better suited to the way you listen to music and more importantly, the sort of music that you like. Now, Monitor Audio Silver 100s, these I would consider to be the most balanced of the of the speakers tested today. If you're looking for something that's halfway between the relaxing sound of the Lintons and the uh, energy and excitement of the Bowers and Wilkins, the Silver 100s are a fantastic choice and you definitely won't be disappointed with them. They really are kind of like a happy midway point between those two. Now, if you choose the Wharfdale Dentons, you're not going to have a bad time at all. In fact, you're gonna have a really good time listening to music with the combination. But my issue here is the experience you'll get with the Dentons with this particular amplifier generally isn't the experience that you would go out of your way to buy something like the Wharfdale Dentons for. And I think that's unfortunate. Like I said, it's a good sounding combination, but it's just not bringing the qualities that most people would associate with those speakers. And in that regard, um, it makes it a little bit of a harder recommendation. But, you know, listen for yourself if you can, and, you know, it might be exactly what you're looking for. So those are my experiences today, pairing the A11 Tribute from Rotel up with a bunch more speakers. And if you enjoyed this format and me returning to this particular product, let us know in the comment section below because there are other products we have in here that we can return to with new combinations. So yeah, let us know. Now, if you want more information on the A11 Tribute, CD11 Tribute, or any of the speakers that we've covered today on this channel, please let us know in the comment section. If you're in Australia, give us a call on the phone, hit us up on social media. We're here to help you guys. Or hey, you can even come in and listen for yourselves, eh? That's always an option. So thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, hit the like button and hit subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Thanks again, and bye for now. Instruments, not just horizontally, but also laterally? The Z axis, we got the instruments on the Z axis, the Y axis. I do three. Oh.